Now, in continuation to the previous lectures, we look at a solved design problem of Ince tank. So, in this question, we have to design an Ince tank of capacity 900 kiloliter water, which is supported on eight columns. So, this is our problem statement. So, we will have, uh, we will need to design all the components of the Ince tank based on this data. So as we are designing all types of tanks on the basis of working stress method, so we first of all calculate the all the design constants which are used for calculations. After that, uh, we have calculated all the design constants, we move on to the proportioning of tank. So I have explained you in the previous lecture that all the proportions or dimensions of different components of the ins tank like H1, H, H2, H3 and D3 all depend upon the diameter D. So in this question D is not given so we will first have to find out the diameter required for this tank. So these are the various proportioning uh, how do we proportion the different components of the ins tank now uh, first of all we write all the terms that is h h1 h3 h2 d3 in terms of d because they all depend on d now we find out r3 that is the radius radius of curvature of the bottom spherical dome this is r3 so it will be d3 square d3 upon 2 whole square plus h3 square upon 2 h3 so we substitute the value of d3 which is 0 0.60 and h3 which is d by 7 here and then we solve r3 r3 is equal to 0 0.386 so why we are doing so why we are doing so why we are doing it because we have we are finding out r3 also in terms of d because we have to find out the value of t so we need to change all the different uh, parameters that is the dimensions of the ins tank to a common uh, variable that is d so now what we will do we have the capacity which is for which we have to design the ins tank so we will uh, have to find out the volume which of the ins tank which will be supporting this much capacity so as you all know that the water is filled up to this particular point so the volume of water in this particular tank will be the volume of this whole region that is from this point to this point okay so we need to find out whole of this volume how will we find out that this is very simple uh, this is uh, up to this part let me erase first up to this part we have a cylinder of diameter D and height capital H after that we have a conical dome of height H2 and diameter D here and D3 here okay now we have to find out uh, the volume of this particular portion so we will deduct this much portion that is This green portion we will deduct from the conical dome portion to get the volume of the shaded region. We have already done this kind of calculation before also. So I hope you understand it now that we first add the volume of cylinder to the volume of conical dome and we subtract this reduced area which is the volume of the bottom spherical dome from it to get the total volume of tank. So volume of tank will be volume of cylindrical portion plus volume of conical dome minus volume of the bottom spherical dome as shown here ok so volume of cylindrical portion will be pi by 4d square into h volume of conical dome is I have already told you in the previous lectures pi by 12 into h2 d square plus d3 square plus d into d3 and volume of any spherical dome is uh, pi by 3 h3 square into 3 uh, um, r3 minus h3 so we get this particular uh, expression for the volume of tank now these are having different proportions of the tank that is h d h2 d3 h3 r3 so in the previous step we have already 
calculated all these dimensions or proportions in terms of d this and all substitute all these values here so h is 0.6 times d h2 is 0.2 times d as you can see here h2 is 0.2 d h is 0.60 d we will keep as same d3 is 0.60 h3 is d by 7 and r3 we have calculated 60 860 860 so we substitute all these values and then we get volume of tank as when we simplify it it we will get 0 0.5 to 6 into d cube you will have to do all these calculations and then we know that the required capacity of tank is 900 should be 900 kilometer kilometer we call this much capacity which we have to store so we convert it in meter cube by dividing uh, by dividing it by 100 and we get diameter is equal to 12 meter so this is how the diameter is calculated uh, sometimes uh, directly diameter may have been given to you also you need not to do such calculations also so but you must need to know how we get this d according to the capacity so now as we have got d so we can get all the other proportions also so d is 12 meter so h will be 0 0.6 of 12 which is 7.2 meter and so on so we get all these dimensions and we make our final diagram of the inch tank showing all these dimensions h1 is the height of the top dome h is the height of the cylindrical portion d is the diameter of whole tank h2 is the height of conical dome which is 2.4 meter h3 is the height of the bottom spherical, spherical dome which is 1.7 meter and d3 is the diameter of the bottom spherical dome which is 7.2 meter so now that we have got all the dimensions we can move on to the design of individual components so first we will start from the top that is the design of top dome so design this is a spherical dome uh, having height 1.7 meter and diameter 2 meter okay so we first of all find out its radius of curvature and its semi vertical angle theta because we require it to calculate the meridional and hoop stresses so r1 will be d g by 2 whole square plus h1 square upon 2 h1 and theta will be sine inverse of d by 2 upon r1 in this particular triangle if we see theta 1 will be sine sin theta 1 will be perpendicular upon hypotenuse that is d by 2 upon r1 so we get the value of theta so now we have get r1 and theta 1 so now we will check whether our dome will be in compression or tension so as it, it is coming out to be less than 51 degree and sorry it will be 20, 49 minutes not 20 minutes so the top dome is under hoop compression so now we have got this that the dome is under compression now uh, let us we will have to assume the thickness of dome so let us assume to be 75 mm you need not to provide very thick uh, domes because uh, they don't carry much loads so now we calculate the self weight of the top dome as in kilonewton per meter square so it will be thickness of dome into 25 that is unit weight of rcc the live load on top dome is taken as 1.5 to 2 kilonewton per meter square so you can take any value and then we get the total load by adding both these load so this is the value of w1 that is small w1 which is the load live load plus dead load acting on the top dome this this is the w1 now we calculate the meridional thrust and hoop thrust and meridional stresses and hoop stresses so meridional thrust is given by w r1 w1 r1 upon 1 plus cos theta 1 so we get this value the meridional stress will be t by uh, the value of meridional thrust divided by the thickness of dome so we get this value now as this is under compression so we check it with permissible stresses in com concrete in compression so if you go I go to the starting of question from table number uh, 2 or 
of I S double three seven zero power two. The sigma C C is eight newton per mm square. So as two point zero point two seven eight is quite less than this value, hence our check is okay. Now we calculate the hoop th thrust. So you must remember here that the maximum circumferential thrust will occur at theta is equal to zero degree. So Although we have the value of theta one as 31 degree 45 minutes, when you are calculating the circumferential or hoop thrust, you substitute zero degree in place of 31 degree 45 minutes because we get the maximum value at that angle. So hoop thrust we get as this value, and we divide it by the thickness of dome to get the hoop stress, and it is also coming out to be very less than the permissible stresses in concrete. So as our check is okay again now as our stresses are within the permissible limits now we can provide the reinforcement as minimum reinforcement which is 0 0.35 percent into thousand into 75 which is the cross-sectional area of the dome and now uh, we will provide both these in the circumferential and hoop directions. Now you must have observed here that I have not divided it by 2. This is because as thickness of dome is very less, we need not to provide the reinforcement on both the faces. Both the faces means the dome will have certain thickness. Okay, So although we prefer that we provide the both these circumferential and monodonal reinforcements, in the front face and in the back face but uh, as here thickness is very less so we need not to provide it in both the faces so I have not divided it by 2 so this is how we get the design of top dome so provide 8 mm dia bars at 190 mm center to center in meridional and circumferential direction so this is the detailing of the top dome now we move on to the design of the next component which is the top ring beam. Top ring beam is designed for the outward component of the meridional thrust which is T into cos theta. So we calculate the hoop tension due to the outward component of the meridional thrust of dome as T cos theta into D by 2 where theta is the theta 1 of the top dome. So we get this value as 107 kN. So the reinforcement to be provided in this ring beam is calculated due to this well, this hoop tension. So the area of reinforcement for this hoop tension will be T upon sigma ST, T1 upon sigma ST. So we get it as 323 mm square, sorry 823 mm square. Now we assume diameter of bar and we calculate the number of bars because it is a beam so we need to find out the exact number of bars. So the number of bars are coming out to be 8. So the detailing will have, if this is your top ring beam, we will provide 8 bars here. Okay, And these will be provided in the form of rings which will be uh, going all along around the circumference of below the top dome. So we provide 8 mm dia, dia bars of 12 mm dia in the top ring beam and AST provided we calculate it to be 905 mm square. Now we have to find out the what is the area required for this beam that is its cross sectional dimensions. So area of ring beam is calculated on the basis of the principle that the direct tensile stresses in concrete due to the hoop tension T1 should not exceed the permissible limits. So the sigma ct should not be greater than t1 upon a plus m minus 1 into ast provided. So we a sigma ct is the permissible tensile stress in concrete which is 1.5 and we substitute all these value here and we are here we are doing this to find out the value of a which is the cross sectional area required for the top ring so for the top ring with this. So we on solving this EST provided we have calculated as 905 mm square so the area required for this beam is coming out to be greater than 65,800 mm square so 
this is the minimum area required required for topping so so you have to choose a cro that cross section of your beam which is having area cross section area greater than 65800 so if we choose a section of 400 by 200 mm its area will be 80000 mm square so i have i've written one zero extra here by mistake so it will be 80000 mm square so uh, we provide a section of 400 by 200 mm and we provide eight no, eight rings of 12 mm diameter okay so as we have got these eight rings and the section is 400 mm width and 200 mm depth you can take any section up to your choice but its cross section area should be greater than this value so now uh, as you know that whenever we are providing such reinforcement we have to tie it with the help of some bars so this this reinforcement if this is the beam the top ring beam provided it will go around the all around the circumference of your tank so it will be provided in the form of all these reinforcements will be provided in the form of rings which will go throughout the circumference of your tank so these have to be tied together with the help of stirrups so we assume 8 mm dia stirrups at 300 mm center to center to tie these together so this is the detailing of your top ring beam having cross section 200 mm 400 mm by 200 mm having eight number rings of 12 mm diameter and 8 mm diameter stirrups at spacing 300 mm center to center so this these are the stirrups which are provided at 300 mm center to center so this is how the design of top ring beam is done now we move on to the next component which is the design of cylindrical walls so cylindrical tank walls are subjected to only the water pressure acting on the walls so the water pressure will be maximum at the base that is at a height h so pw will be 10 in uh, gamma into the h which is 10 into 7.2 so we get this is pw hoop tension due to water pressure at the base of wall will be maximum and it will be t2 is equal to pw into d by 2 so t2 is 432 kN this is the hoop tension in the cylindrical tank wall so we provide the reinforcement hoop reinforcement in the cylindrical wall because this is a circular tank so the reinforcement will be provided in like ring or hoops so the, uh, the area of reinforcement will be determined on the basis of this t2 so we get e2 ast2 as t2 upon sigma st and then we are getting this value of ast now we provide 16 mm dia bars and calculate the spacing now we are not designing a beam here we are designing a wall so we need to find out the spacing so spacing is coming out to be 120 so provide 16 mm dia bars at 120 mm center to center at the bottom of wall on both faces i am writing bottom here because uh, let me make a diagram here if this is your wall then uh, as we know the pressure is more at the bottom as compared to top <coughs> sorry so the hoop tension will also reduce towards the top so we have to provide more reinforcement at the bottom and we can reduce the spacing at the top because there are not too much hoop tension acting there so i am writing here only at bottom of the wall so similarly you can calculate i have calculated i have calculated i have calculated this hoop tension at height capital h that is at the bottom of tank you can calculate the values of hoop tension at different heights of the tank wall and you can increase or double the spacing wherever this hoop tension is uh, getting reduced uh, getting 50% reduced so i have made this table here at height h we were getting hoop tension is 432 at height at height 6 meter you will get 360 so there will be only one change in place of h as 7.2 you will have 6 so we will get revised t so if we do the calculation we will get the ast as this 
and then at 4 meter we get EHT as this at 2 meter this and at height 0 meter 2 so this height 0 meter means top ok so as hoop tension uh, as you can see here the, the value of at base was 432 so it will be almost half nearly in this region here it is 240 which is not half of 432 and here it is at 2 meter 120 so be between 2 meter and 4 meter we will have re reduced the hoop tension by 50 percent so the reinforcement will also reduced by 50 percent here hence we can double the spacing okay now as we move, move towards the top here the value are 0 meter and here it is to 120 uh, sorry here is 0 kN and 120 kN so around here between 0 to 2 meter you will the value of 432 will become almost 1 fourth so we can curtail we can sorry not curtail but we can increase the spacing at different points so in the bottom portion up to 3 meter height up to this particular point we have large amount of food tension so we can get we can provide 16 mm dia bars at 120 centers on both faces of tank wall up to a height of 3 meter ok then here it is becoming half so we will reduce it to 200 mm that will sorry reduce or double the spacing of the reinforcement reduce the reinforcement and double the spacing of reinforcement and here we will the, uh, the reinforcement is com will be approximately one fourth of that provided at the base of the wall so we will again double it or we will increase the spacing so we provide 16 mm dia bar at 2 I think it is yes 240 center, center on both faces of tank wall up to from height 3 meter to a distance of 2 meter this means that from this point to 2 meter here you are providing spacing as 240 and above that you are increasing the spacing to 300 ok so there is no hard and fast rule that you have to adopt only such type of uh, method you can just uh, in the bottom portion up to a particular height like in this portion you can have the spacing you have got that is 120 and in the remaining portion up to the top you can increase the spacing ok so this is uh, this depends on the designer what uh, he or she prefers so this is how the hoop tension reinforcement is provided in the cylindrical wall now uh, in the cylindrical wall this is the reinforcement we calculated here is the hoop reinforcement which is provided like this okay now uh, we have to find we have also to uh, provide some vertical reinforcement to support this hoop reinforcement so vertical reinforcement will be the minimum reinforcement which is the AST is equal to 0.35% of the cross sectional area of your wall but for finding the cross sectional area you need to have find out you need to have the thickness of your tank wall so to find the thickness of tank wall we will use the same principle that sigma ct should be greater than uh, tension upon thousand into t that is the cross sectional area of the wall plus m minus 1 ast provided so we substitute here all the values to get the value of thickness so it is coming here that thickness should be greater than 260 mm so we provide 300 mm thick tank wall now we provide the vertical reinforcement as minimum reinforcement at 0.35 percent of cross sectional area and we distribute it equally on two faces so we divide it by two and we get the spacing so we are getting 10 mm dia vertical bar at 140 mm center to center on each face of wall so this is the detailing of a tank wall the circle now at up to height 3 meter we are providing the hoops of spacing to 120 center to center from 3 meter to height from above 2 meter we are getting uh, as 16 pi at 240 center to center and in the uppermost region we have increased the spacing to 300 apart from these two uh, the vertical reinforcement on each face has been provided as 10 mm dia bars at 140 mm center to center and the thickness of tank wall has been calculated as 300 mm so this is the design of your cylindrical wall I have used here the approximate method of design you can also use the IS code method you can choose the 
uh, appropriate table from your IS table 370 part 4 uh, here we will be using table number 10, 9 and 11 so you can get the values of reinforcements from that also it is up to you now we move on to the next that is component which is the design of the bottom ring beam so we have done the design of top ring beam sorry the top dome top ring beam and the cylindrical wall now we will design this bottom ring beam so bottom as i have told you uh, explained to you before the bottom ring beam is subjected to the load to the load from above that is the outward component of this particular load from above will be causing tension on this top uh, bottom ring beam apart from that it is filled here with water also so that water will also create some hoop tension in this bottom ring beam so we will calculate the hoop tension due to both these components one is the outward component of the vertical forces from above and next is due to the water pressure so first we calculate the vertical loads because uh, we have to find out all this vertical load which are coming from above so what are those vertical loads these vertical loads will be the vertical load coming from the top dome vertical load coming from top ring beam and then the load of the tank wall and the self weight of ring beam so these are all the vertical load up to now load from top dome is coming out to be t sin theta 1 ok now the outward component of this t which, which was a meridional thrust acting on the top dome has also already been considered while we designed the top bottom uh, sorry top ring beam now its vertical component will contribute to the vertical load acting on the bottom ring beam so t sin theta where t is the meridional thrust acting on the top dome ok so we get first vertical load here load from top ring beam will be the self weight of your top ring beam which is 0.4 into 0.2 which is the cross sectional uh, dimension of your top ring beam which we have calculated in the previous step next load of tank wall with the cross sectional uh, area of your tank wall which is thickness of tank wall into its height and in to multiply it by gamma we get the load of tank wall self weight of ring beam is calculated by multiplying the cross sectional area of the bottom ring beam with 25 uh, here as if you you can skip this also here we have already assumed the size of the bottom ring beam so you can skip this also you okay so I have already assumed here the size of ring beam as 1.2 meter by 0.6 meter always when you are assuming keep this in mind that the size of bottom ring beam will be quite larger as compared to the top ring beam because bottom ring beam is subjected to all the vertical loads from above as well as the water pressure at this particular point so we add all these loads to get the total vertical load acting on uh, here which is W2 is equal to 85 km per meter so this is the load W2 which is acting on the bottom ring beam its outward component will be uh, acting some force or hoop tension on the bottom ring beam so hoop tension on ring beam B2 will be equal to hoop tension due to the vertical load plus hoop tension due to water pressure as I already explained to you to calculate uh, the hoop tension due to vertical load we need to find out the inclination this theta 2 angle so if you look here in this particular case tan theta 2 if you look at this triangle uh, tan theta 2 or this triangle you can take any one of these this triangle or this triangle tan theta 2 will be d minus d3 by 2 which is this portion divided by h2 ok so if this is the sorry this is the triangle now and this is the triangle here also so this total length is d this is d3 so this length will come out to be d minus d3 by 2 and this height is h2 so we get the value of theta 2 as 
45 degree okay so you need to first calculate this angle theta 2 now hook tension due to vertical load will be the outward component of this load this is the vertical load its outward component will be this so it will be the tan component of the load so the the hook tension due to vertical load will be w2 into tan theta by 2 into d by 2 because d by 2 is because they are calculating it for whole of the beam here also and in the above in the in sec other face all in the other direction also so we calculate hook tension due to vertical load as 510 kN apart from the from the hoop tension due to vertical load we will have hoop tension due to the water pressure which will be PW into D by 2 and PW is gamma W into H okay because here the we are considering the pressure at this particular point so it will be gamma W into H so we get the second hoop tension is 432 and we combine both these this plus this to get 942 kN so we design the bottom ring beam for this hoop tension so the area of steel to resist this hoop tension will be T3 upon sigma ST and we get the AST and when we then we assume the diameter of bar to get number of bars because we are designing a beam here so we get 24 number of beams so we have to provide 24 number diam uh, bars of 20 mm diameter in the beam of size 1.2 by 0.6 meter now uh, as you know we have assumed here the size of the ring beam so we need to check whether we have assumed it right or not if and also if you have not assumed the size of ring beam here you have to find out the size of ring beam so it will be calculated in the same way as the top ring beam sigma ct should be greater than t3 upon a cross section area of beam required plus m minus 1 into ast provided so ast provided will be 24 into pi by 4 20 square so we substitute it here to get the area required for beam which is coming out to be 5 it should be greater than 5 lakh 69226 mm square the area of beam which we have assumed was 1200 into 600 that is 7 lakh 23000 which is greater than the required one so hence our assumption is correct so this is how the area of bottom beam is is calculated now to tie all these 24 bars together we have to provide 10 mm dia bars at 150 mm to center or you can take any a diameter of stirrup and any suitable spacing you think okay so as you see i have uh, written here 150 mm center to center and in the top ring beam it was 300 so I have reduced here the spacing of stirrups because there are large number of diameter large number of bars here so we have to tie them properly and also the width of the beam is very large so more number of stirrups will be required you don't need to do any uh, separate design of the shear stirrups you just have to assume this value so this is the final detailing we have bottom ring beam of size 1.2 meter by 0 0.6 meter having 24 number 20 mm dia bars and which are tied together by 10 mm dia stirrups of spacing 150 mm center to center so this is how design of bottom ring beam is done now we proceed to the next component which is the conical dome so as you I have explained to you conical dome is subjected to uh, the vertical load acting from above which is W2 and apart from that it is subjected to its self weight and also the weight of water acting on the conical dome. So basically the vertical load acting on the conical dome has three components one is its self weight one is the load coming from above that is w2 and third is the weight of water acting on your cone tank wall tank wall tank wall coming from above is w2 we have already calculated w2 which includes the weight from coming from top dome from top ring beam from cylindrical wall as well as the self weight of bottom ring beam also it had it included that weight so we get 
it as w2 into pi d so this is the road from tank wall now we have to find out the weight of water acting on the conical dome so this red lines or uh, this portion uh, shaded portion which i am showing is the water which is acting on the conical dome here also water is present but its weight will be, we will be considering while we are designing the bottom spherical dome so we are have to calculate only the weight or the volume of this water so we have to calculate this volume of shaded region so we calculate it by finding the weight of water in the cylindrical portion a b c d plus weight in the co conical portion that is c d e of course this a b c d and c d e consist of both this cylindrical portion as well as this cylindrical portion and this co and both these conical portions so the weight of water acting in the cylindrical portion of a b a cylindrical portion a b c d will be uh, as i have explained to you in the previous video lecture also this is the big cylinder and this is a small cylinder so if we reduce this size uh, volume of this smaller cylinder from the bigger cylinder we will get the required shaded region so the volume of the larger cylinder will be pi by 4 d squared into h and volume of this middle smaller cylinder is pi by 4 d3 square its diameter is d3 into h so we will get the and we when we multiply it with gamma that is the unit weight of water so we will get the weight of water in the cylindrical portion which is coming out to be this now similarly when we have to find out the weight of conical portions this and this we calculate the volume of whole of this conical dome and we subtract from it the weight or volume of this cylindrical portion and we will get the desired or required shear depletion okay so what we do is the volume of the cone is pi by 12 h2 h is the height h2 is the height of the conical dome capital d is the upper diameter d3 is the lower diameter so pi by 12 h2 d square plus d3 plus d d3 will give you the whole volume and the volume of the middle cylinder will be this much portion will be gamma into gamma by, sorry pi by 4 into d3 square this is d3 into h so this cylinder height is h2 because this is the height of the conical dome and this is d3 so pi by 4 d3 square into h2 into gamma will give the weight to be the weight of the water in conical portion so when we subtract it from the larger volume we get the required result and when we add both these we get the weight of water in the conical dome which is coming out to be 8437 km so you must have noticed as we go from top to bottom the weight is go the load are going to increase now self weight third type third vertical load acting on your conical dome is the self weight of conical dome so the self weight of conical dome is gamma of the rcc in the conical dome into pi d plus d3 by 2 is the, the average radius of the conical dome into slant height into dc that is thickness of conical dome so if you look here in this conical dome the slant height is calculated in this triangle by pythagoras theorem so this length is d minus d3 by 2 and this length is h2 so the slant height will be l is equal to under root of d minus d3 by 2 whole square upon h2 plus h2 square so we get it the slant out height to be 3.394 and we assume the thickness of the conical dome to be 300 mm and we get the self weight of conical dome as 768 kN now we add the self weight of conical dome the weight of water in conical dome and the load from the tank wall coming from above to get the total load acting on the conical dome this is the total vertical load 
Now load per unit length on conical dome will be W3 upon pi D3. So we are getting it as 548 kilometer per meter. Now we calculate the meridional thrust and the hoop thrust on the conical dome. So as as this is the weight acting on the conical dome from above W3. So the meridional thrust acting along the conical dome will be this value will be W3 into cos component of this particular angle and this angle we have already calculated in the previous step it was coming out to be 45 degree. So meridional thrust will be 548 into cos 45. Meridional stress will be uh, dividing the meridional thrust with thickness of dome which is coming out to be 1.36 which is less than the permissible stress hence ok. So now we calculate the hoop thrust on the conical dome. So the hoop thrust on the conical dome is uh, due to the water pressure on the dome and the self weight of conical dome. So what is actually hoop thrust? If this is the conical dome, the force acting in this direction is the hoop thrust. So this hoop thrust will be due to two forces that is one is the weight of or pressure of water inside the conical dome and next is the self weight of the conical dome also. So these two components, the pressure will always act perpendicular to the uh, wall of conical dome. So if this is the conical dome, the pressure will act like this. So this is the pressure Pw, this is the weight of the conical dome. Uh, cross section weight of conical dome and uh, due to the both these we get we have to find out this hoop tension T4 so from trigonometry T4 will come out to be P W into cos theta 2 plus WC into tan theta 2 into D by 2 and PW is gamma into H WC is TC into gamma C that is thickness of dome into gamma C. So we are taking here only uh, the thickness of dome because we are we are calculating the loads in per, per meter square. So the T4 will come out to be 350.47 which is the hoop thrust acting on or hoop tension acting on the conical dome. So now we have the meridional thrust and the hoop thrust. So the reinforcement in the conical dome is provided such that the hoop reinforcement will resist the T4 and the vertical or slanting reinforcement or, or the meridional reinforcement in the conical dome will be provided as the minimum reinforcement. So the area of reinforcement to steel uh, to resist the hoop tension will be T4 upon sigma ST which we are getting as 2696. So we calculate the spacing by assuming the diameter and we are getting the spacing. So therefore provide 16 mm diameter bar at 140 mm center to center on both faces. Okay. So if this is our conical dome, then the hoop reinforcement is provided like this. Okay. On both faces, that is on both faces of the thickness of dome. So now we check the thickness of conical dome because we have assumed it from on the basis of this principle. So thickness of dome required is coming out to be 209 and we have provided thickness of dome which is greater than the required hence our assumption is ok. Now uh, this this much reinforcement we are getting uh, at the top of the dome because as you can see here, here PW we have taken as gamma into H. So if this was a con conical dome, the water pressure we are con considering here is at this particular point here above the conical dome we have the wall so the pressure at this point is gamma w into h because this height is capital H okay now at the bottom of the conical dome this pressure will reduce because of the shape of this conical dome so you can find out the hoop tension here also at the bottom of conical dome and provide separate reinforcement here because here the reinforcement requirement will be less. So we are now calculating the hoop tension at the bottom. 
of the perimeter dome. So we have calculated the root reinforcement up to this point, which is coming out to be its name diabar is at 140 mm center to center. Now at this point, first of all, the pressure of water will be gamma into H plus H2. Then this is coming out to be 96. <coughs> now we calculate the hoop tension at bottom PW cos theta 2 plus WC ten theta 2 into D3 by 2. And uh, note here again that in the previous when we were calculating the hoop tension at top, we were taking D by 2 because here the diameter is D. And when we are calculating the hoop tension here, here you will have to take diameter as D3. So we get the hoop tension at bottom. So now from this we calculate the reinforcement at bottom and we assume the diameter of bars and calculate the spacing. So we are now getting 69 dia bars at 190. So you can see clearly here that at the top portion of sorry 